Uh, good job. Right now we're reading Shulchan Aruch from uh, Reb Shleim Gansvid. Once we reviewed about the children and uh, masturbation, uh, we quoted him once. We had a beautiful Shabbos. We just uh, finished a Kiddush and a birthday and a meal. We, we uh, spoke about uh, kosher. I delivered uh, kosher wine and flowers, my friend's wife's birthday with a nice Shana Teva card and a birthday uh, wish and I, we spoke about kosher and I realized that some t and I of course invoked the authority of Paskim who agree on uh, certain historical facts and it was a guy who was, uh, was, wasn't was kosher but then became religious out of, and uh, feels more Jewish and uh, cool guy but a little bit of toughy and he I noticed that we we can't win quickly. It takes a long time to win over, even if what you're saying is true and accurate, because people have been taught a lot of bad ideas and and confusingly. And of course, they apply belief. When things don't make sense, you apply belief to it. If it doesn't make any doesn't doesn't make any uh, logical sense or doesn't it doesn't add up. Uh, little beliefs and things like uh, he said Avram is the first Jew and I try to help him understand the difference between Hebrews, Israelites and Jews and Avram was of Ur Kazdim, Ur of the Chaldeans it's important that they know that Avram didn't keep kosher it's in the Bible that's why the Hellenistic Jews liked Avram because Avram was a, he served the Lord milk and meat or butter butter and meat you know so they liked him because he didn't he wasn't such a law of Moses type of guy but he was more of like a prophet and Jews wanted to be Jewish but they didn't want to keep uh, these laws that they felt were outdated so there's a history of, of that uh, of, of Ram being the choice of some type of Jews so I was, I was just going to give you a short line from the Shulchan Aruch from uh, the Pitzia Sapas I remember we used to get tests on this in Yeshiva Pitzia Sapas so we have here Im Chalik Prusas HaMoitzi LaHamesubim LaYizrek don't throw the pieces of bread, the hamoitzi that you're doing when you you break the bread. Don't throw it. The asur, it's uh, it's uh, forbidden. The asur lizrek as hapas v'gam lo yitnana l'teich yoday ella yani chena lefanav. Don't throw it because it's a forbidden to throw bread, and uh, don't give it to him in his hand, but put it down for him. So there's a Iraqi woman that was here today, and in their custom, they throw the the bread, um, and it's a, it has a special significance to that, and it's a very special tradition, and it must be respected. This guy's playing catch with his dog. It's so cool. So um, we, uh, of course, this uh, you have to understand. I explained to those who listen, who want to know. That this Shulchan Aruch is written by Reb Shleim Gansfried and, and uh, printed in Jerusalem by the Sinai Publications. Of course, the people uh, who published the book did it for educational reasons, not to try to ruin the masses. You have Israel has uh, Eastern and Western Jews mixed in a modern state, which is, as they were speaking today, was such a blessing that Jews have a home. We have a country to go back to. They were speaking about getting a home for the minion, a proper sanctuary, a temple and uh, how it's special and they feel like they're wandering Jews because they do Shabbat in different people's houses, which I like. It's more spiritual that way and it's more intimate. But they want to find a, a sanctuary. And uh, they say how special it is to have Israel. So Israel is a mix of different Jews. What happens if you have that and you have a Shulchan Aruch and you have a rabbi who did, did, either did or didn't con take into consideration the fact that Jews have many customs and Jews come from many places. And, and as long as there's nothing harmful about it and disrespectful, it, there's no reason to say it's forbidden and wrong. Or at least you should write, this book is just for people that live in this special town in Galicia, right? But that's not what it says, so it gets uh, confusing. The woman, the lady of the house, she's reading Shulchan Aruch in English. This is just a way of her furthering her Jewish education. Yes, she does accept it as an authority. So we spoke about kosher today, and I realized that it's not easy. Maybe it's gonna, you, you can only educate a few people and it takes a long time. So um, philosophy will lose. It's, it's, it's the Maidasha Kehilas Yaakov. It's the, it's the philosophy and education and logical thinking is the, it's the, it's the in, inheritance and it's the, it's the treasure of the few. 
and if, it's very easy to access. I was never that great, smart kid learning in yeshiva. It's very easy to train yourself and learn how to, to properly learn, but uh, it's, it's going to take a while till people find it. And I always try to make it simple and put it on fingertips so everybody can access such information and it can be a nachos aklal, meaning that, uh, that really everybody could, it's just a matter of them discovering it. So we spoke about kosher. The guy Keith, asks me the dumbest question, which many Christians ask, what, what, anything bad happened to you? Is your family unloving? I said, quite the contrary. I love my Judaism. I love my family. But these are a bunch of bad ideas. And he argued that uh, kosher was a tradition, but he doesn't know which kosher, which level. Many people suffer because the level that they were indoctrinated into was a strict level. So I explained to him that kosher is not from the prophets, but it's from the kosher is from the kings. We, uh, sorry, from the priests. Kuteras Kayanim, Vayikra. So it's laws from priests. In the, the, and, and even though it, uh, it survived as a custom, it does not, uh, um, it's not a, a moral uh, law. It doesn't apply to uh, uh, humanity, morality, and it doesn't make you more religious. But you feel more religious because it's a very wide held custom. I, I mentioned the Paskim. I mentioned how I had a Hasidish um, Rebbe family at my house and we spoke about Kasha and then we went out and I ate the pepperoni pizza and he said, how could you do that? And I said, it's just a custom and I'm outside and I'm hungry. What's the point? It's like wearing a white shirt on Shabbos. If you have a black shirt on Shabbos, should someone attack you? So he said, uh, but it's pepperoni. It's not like you're eating Kasha, you know, milk. And I said, no, it's the same thing. There's contaminated animals that they believed was the case. Oh, look at all these houses the way they're lined up. So I said, what? well, that's not uh, the... So uh, we spoke about that, and then I mentioned they invoked the Puskin. And he. And then later I said to him, there's no... He said to his son, oh, there's a, there's a thar, you know, authority and wisdom. You ask the Chabad rabbis, they'll tell you. I said, the Chabad rabbis don't claim to be the authority. They're not even... Of course, someone who is uh, uh, ignorant may make such a claim, but uh, usually a, a rational and educated person will say, I don't know. I, uh, this is a question that a Paisic needs to answer, and this is a question that a Paisic needs to ask a scientist, because science does help Puskim see better. So, so I said to him, there's no authority on knowledge. Everybody needs to use as much as possible uh, uh, information. They need to do research. We always have to learn. And he said, you contradicted yourself. You said that you spoke that the Puskim agree with you. And now I need authority or not. I said, no, the Puskim are not my authority at all for religion. And they're not the authority, but they're the authority on, 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 on halacha. Because you don't have anybody that challenges the Puskim today. Because religion is very limited today. So if you at, if a Paisik, if Paisik is your authority right now until you grow out of it, I'm not using the Puskim as the authority and then if the Paisik wakes up one day on the wrong side, then my life is screwed. No. I'm telling you that even though what I say sounds outlandish to you and it sounds like, wow, you've been dedicating your life to something that's, that you, you thought it was a law and it was just a custom and it's not important and you thought it was important, now I tell you, go ask a Paisik. If the Paisik is intellectually sound, he'll tell you, I don't know. I need further research. I need time. But he, but, and if he says something that he doesn't know, we could easily correct him. If we know that he said something that he doesn't know, we could, we could demonstrate to him how he said something that made no sense. So, it's very interesting how the um, Shulchan Aruch decides what's a mitzvah. Uh, mizbeach and the uh, table because it's like the mizbeach so it's a mitzvah to put salt on the table how does this guy know that it's a mitzvah to put salt on the table and, 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 and what the hell is that a mitzvah of the 613 and of course there's answers like that 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 that, 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 that but in, in reality this is a theologian and I'm going to give you guys a link to what theology is theology is anybody can cook it up and anybody can make it up and anybody can refute it and not be able to refute it if I tell you that I have a dragon in my garage and then nobody can say I don't and, and nonsense like that. Thank you for watching Shane Vachamishi. Have a good Shabbos and a good, uh, a good Shabbos Slichis and a, and, a, uh, and a beautiful year. Uh, 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 uh,